Hello, I'm Millie. And I'm John T. And welcome to Wanderlust. Today, we're going to be talking about how we support our children through this whole relocation from the UK to Singapore. We've actually relocated once before from the east of England, Norwich, uh, to Surrey, which is south of London. And it was quite a sudden move and we realised that it really unsettled the children. And so now moving from one side of the world to the other, from one, one culture to a completely different culture, we've decided that we need to be really intentional about the way that we support our children through this move. We've been to Singapore a few times with the children as well and we like to make home videos of people that we've seen and places that we've been to. So it's really nice for the children to watch all of the videos back and to remember all the places that they've visited and all the things they've done there and who they've been there with as well. Yeah, it's really nice because we set it out as a bit of a treat for them and we'll say, you know, we've got a treat this evening, we get to watch home videos and they just go wild, they love it. There's lots of videos on YouTube as well, so if you're thinking of moving abroad, have a look on YouTube and see what videos that other people have uploaded as well. Aspen, for some reason, really enjoys watching water slides. Yeah, there's like three videos of water slides in Singapore and that's about it. And there's two water parks and she just watches these over and over and over again. She's never been on a water slide, that's probably what the attraction is, but she can't wait to go to one of these. I've got really into watching this guy who basically walks around the streets of Singapore holding a camera. It's a bit weird, but all he does is you just see what there is. There's nothing else to it. There's no talking. You just experience the street. And um, that's been really, really good. We'll put a link to his mm -hmm. videos um, below. So check those out. It's been really helpful to watch those because it's helped us to spot what things are in the local areas. So we can say to the children, oh, we can go here for our shopping. You could go here for a haircut. Mm. I can go there to get my nails done. Um, <laughs> yeah. Things like that, really. Just everyday things that will probably pass by on you know, the school run. It just makes everything really familiar when we get there for them already. And you know, hopefully that will help that transition for them too. Milo and Aston will be starting at new schools. So we've been showing them videos of their school, photos of what uniform they'll wear, talking to them about what or things that they'll be able to do at school, that they'll be able to learn instruments. There's a swimming pool at the school as well. Swimming is something that they both love. Mm. They're complete water babies. So talking about things that they'll be able to do there, as opposed to the things that they'll be leaving behind, is really helping them to have a positive mindset on the things that they're going to get to do when they get there as well. Mm. We're also being really open and honest with them and allowing them to ask us questions and giving them honest answers as well. Milo's mentioned that he's going to miss his friends and we've said that that is a part of moving to another country and that he missed his friends when we moved from Norwich to Surrey but he was still able to send them video messages and text messages to his friends to keep in touch that way so he knows that that's a way he'll be able to do it and we've explained he'll be able to make new friends as well which he's really looking forward to as well and to see some of his cousins out there that are his mm. age. Those of you who watched our vlog last week will realise that we uh, had a situation where we actually lost a job to, um, to, to Singapore and we thought that the whole thing was off. And then within a few days it all turned around and we had it back again. Um, one of the things that we did at the time when we lost the job is that we decided that we weren't going to share that news with the children at that time. The reason for it was because I'd actually applied um, that same day we lost the job, we, uh, I'd applied for three different jobs. One quite uh, local to us, very close to us here in the UK, one in Thailand, one in Dubai. We're also exploring um, a, another potential in Singapore mm. and um, we didn't want to tell them that uh, this is off and we didn't know what, what was coming up next. We wanted to be able to tell them something that was solid, that was happening and, and a good thing too because as far as they're concerned, nothing's changed. They didn't have to go through that whole stress that we went through um, last week. Check out the vlog, it's, it's mad. <laughs> We've noticed that children don't really have a clue about um, time and how long uh, 10 minutes is or how long five weeks is. Um, Millie had the situation today yeah, I said to Aspen, I'm going to get in the shower, could you please get dressed by the time I come out? So I had my shower and then 10 minutes later I get out and Aspen's still sat there in her pyjamas playing. But I realised she doesn't, she doesn't know how long I'm going to be in the shower, so she doesn't have a sense of how long it's going to take before she needs to stop playing and get dressed. So it wasn't really her fault. She had listened to me, but she, she can't tell the time, so she, is it relevant to her really? So we've tried to like put in time landmarks or like time marks for them to be able to see uh, what is happening like significant events that they know when we're going to Singapore so for example our children now know that it's going to be Aspen's birthday first which is next week and then Milo's birthday which is about four weeks after that and then after that we're going to be heading to Singapore and just to give them a rough idea of what's to come and that's been really really helpful for them so you know there was a period of time where Aspen was saying oh, are we going to Singapore today or when I wake up in the morning are we off to Singapore and I think just giving them that idea was really really helpful for them to be able to know that they still had to wait and there was a bit of a gap. Mm. 
Last week we went to a really lovely place called Abinger Hammer and there's a little river that flows through the village and as we drove through it was completely packed and we preferred to go to places slightly off the beaten track. So we followed the map and we found a little bridge and as we walked through the woodlands we found a little bit of river just to ourselves. The kids had some nets and they went fishing and managed to get some little like river shrimp in buckets. It was a really lovely day and while we were there we decided to ask them some questions about what they love about Singapore. So check it out. What uh, are you excited about with, with moving to Singapore? Tell me the nice loud voice, please. I get to see Gigi, my Gigi Pa, and my cousins. I'm having my own bedroom. Why? Because I don't want my little to wake me up. <laughs> Do you like to eat the best in Singapore? Shaping crab and milk. My favourite food is fish balls, fish balls and noodles, noodles and fish balls, fish ball soup and noodles, noodles, soup and fish balls, all of my favourite stuff. Okay. What do you like about the weather in Singapore? Um, Mm. It's hot, it only goes up to 37 degrees, it's too hot. I'm going to have eight bottles a day for my new bottle, wherever it is. As you can see from the video, they're really looking forward to things in Singapore. They're looking forward to new things like having their own bedrooms and seeing family. Milo mentioned Gigi Ma and Gigi Pa, which are his great grandparents, so John T's grandparents. They're an amazing couple. They're in their 90s. So we're really looking forward to spending a lot more time with them as well. Aspen talked about having her own room. And so the children at the moment have been sharing a bedroom. And having their own room is going to be something that is really exciting for them, but also very new. Mm -hmm. um, they find it difficult to be apart. They're really, really good friends, which is lovely for us and for them as well. But it's going to be a tricky time for them. So we decided that we need to make sure that we include them on choosing things like furniture for their bedrooms, but also making their bedrooms a bit familiar to them as well. Mm -hmm. So we've decided to keep hold of some rugs of theirs and um, and duvet covers so that it's something we can take with us when we get there and, and hopefully that, that ties in that whole familiarity mm. and security for them. We actually have been doing that ever since they were babies going on holiday. Um, Milo's first uh, long haul flight was to Singapore. We did a trip to Singapore and Thailand when he was just 12 months old. And we made sure we just brought with him um, the two teddies that he would always have next to him in his little cot at home. So whether it was the bassinet in the plane or the cot in the hotel or um, wherever we were, it was just that familiarity and that security for him that, that, that made it made the transition a little bit smoother. Mm. We've been looking to strip back things on their bedrooms and some of their clothes they won't need anymore, like the big jumpers and trousers. So we've been talking to them about what things in their bedroom and in the rest of the house that we will need to be getting rid of some things because we just can't take because it's too big and because of our shipping allowance as well. So this has been a really nice opportunity to talk to the children about ways they can be generous with some of their old toys and clothes that they don't use anymore. Yeah, we want our children to grow up knowing that they can be generous with the things that they have. You know, we try not to hold on to the things that we own too tightly and know that it might be something that really helps somebody else or just make somebody else's day. And I guess, you know, we've been asking the children to think about their friends who might have younger siblings and think of people they'd like to give their old toys mm -hmm. to or things that, you know, once upon a time were really precious to them. And so they know that it costs them something. But, you know, I think it's a really, really good habit for children to learn. This whole coronavirus lockdown has actually been really helpful for us in that um, we've been able to show the children that we can stay in touch with our friends and family via FaceTime mm. um, as kind of normality at the moment. 
and so moving abroad um, different time zones and all that sort of stuff explain to the children that we'll have to stay in touch with everybody via video calls um, kind of feels normal for them at the moment which is really really handy um, we would still be trying to show them that, how positive that is uh, if we weren't in lockdown um, and we're kind of fortunate in that Millie's sister already lives in Australia, mm -hmm. my parents have lived abroad, my younger sister's lived abroad, so we've had to do a lot of FaceTiming anyway, so it's something that they're quite used to. Mm. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's a lot less stressful than last week's, we know. Um, but uh, if you're enjoying it, please do hit like. Please subscribe to be able to stay up to date with everything that we're doing here on, on YouTube. And do leave us some thoughts and comments below as well. You can stay up to date with what we're doing via our blog, which is at wonderlust.click, and also through our Instagram, which is wonderlustvlogs. We hope you have a great week, and we'll see you next time.